All right. Well, it is 5 p.m. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to call the meeting to order. November 2nd uh, for Land Use Transportation Committee, UTC. I'm calling the meeting to order, and I understand if, if anything has changed, uh, we don't have any public comment. Okay. So I'm going to move right to committee business. And the first item, item A is approval of minutes, December 14th, 2020. Mr. Chair, we, uh, I... Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead. You want me to make a motion? Uh, hold on before you do that. I'm sorry. So um, introduce myself again. I'm the chair for the council member Russo. We have uh, council member Tran, who is also a member. Um, council member Martin Moore will be a little late. And please, other council members, please introduce yourselves. Uh, council President Susan Honda. Thank you, Susan. Council member Lydia Safadasan. Thank you, Lydia. And I think that's it that I see. Oh, one more. Leander, are you there? Hi, this is Leander Kraft. Sorry for uh, joining. That's okay. We're doing some introductions. Thank you. All right. So, Council member Tran, go ahead. If you had that motion. All right. Okay. Take two. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Um, take two. No, that's all right. Okay. So I move. Uh, okay. Now I forgot. Um, I move approval of the September 14, 2020 minutes as is written. It is motion for uh, Council Mayor Tram, seconded by me. I will second that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And we have one member not here. So unanimous right now for two that we have approval of minutes September 14. Item B, uh, citywide adaptive traffic signal control, ITS improvements, phase one, two, and three, authorization transfer funds and expenditure increase of the project. And I believe Naveen is on here to do that. Naveen, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. You just kind of think he's muted. Good evening, uh, Chair Baruso, uh, Council President Honda, and the Council members. Uh, for the record, I'm Naveen Chandra, Senior Capital Engineer, Public Works Department. I'm here to present citywide adaptive traffic signal control, IDS improvements, phase one and two and phase three project, authorization to transfer funds and expenditure increase of the project. Policy question, should the council authorize to transfer funds and increase expenditure for the citywide adaptive traffic signal control, IDS improvements, phase one and phase two and phase three project. Background, the adaptive traffic control system is a system that monitors traffic conditions in real time and modifies the signal timing every signal cycle. This reduces delays and stops, thus improving both air quality and safety. The city council awarded the project at the number 19 2020 city council meeting. Um, the other two phases of the project are, number one, procurement and installation of the system hardware and software, which is in progress. Number two, construction and fit out of the traffic control center, which is complete. A background, summary of the changes. Um, we are adding additional work. Uh, number one, that would be South 348, SR18 and Enchanted Parkway, south, south intersection, which is referred as ITS 34, and communications between uh, South 348, SR18 and Enchanted Parkway, um, south intersection, and I-5 ramp, I-5 southbound ramps and South 348. 
if you re recollect, this was one of the um, alternative when we awarded the project, but we did not choose to award this portion of the project. However, we added this work to the variable lane use control project, and we, which we deleted it because we couldn't get the right of way and washed out uh, would not approve that project. Now we are trying to add this project at this point because it is needed for the adaptive uh, system to work. Number two, revisions. Um, this, uh, this change includes revisions to the washdot intersections because we didn't have the washdot comments when we bid the project. And we worked with them for uh, almost like seven months. And then we kind of resolved some of the issues. Um, mostly it is separating out the system between what city controls and what uh, washdot controls. Number two would be the video detection. Um, we have a video detection at uh, various vendors and various versions, and we would not have known until we started working on this project. That's when we found out there were some adjustment needs to be made. So we had to add that as a part of this revision. And then the third one is increase in stock cost, uh, because this project is take, uh, is duration is longer than anticipated. That's why the city staff cost has increased, and so is King County staff, which they are helping us uh, with the inspection and programming of the controls, uh, control systems, and so forth for the project. Background: Traffic Im impact fees of over one million seven hundred thousand has been collected in the past three years. Adaptive signal control project is an appropriate use of these funds as a as the purpose of the TIF is to offset the development impact by the funding traffic system improvement and mitigate increased traffic. Staff also recommends transferring traffic impact fee funds of 170,000 to the project. Available funding, um, project 202 and project 216, which is phase one and two and phase three is 3,675,000. And we are requesting the transfer of uh, traffic impact fee of 170,000. Which would which would which would come out uh, available funding for three million eight hundred forty five thousand. Estimated expenditures: uh, citywide traffic signal control ITS improvements, phase one and two, and phase three is one million six hundred forty nine thousand nine hundred eighty dollars. Construction contingency is eighty thousand. Additional work, wash dot and detection revisions, which I just mentioned, is seventy five thousand eight hundred eighty one dollars. Traffic control center construction and contingency is 125,000. Transport group uh, design and construction engineering support is 458,242. City staff is 80,000. Uh, Western systems detection design would be 17,000. Western systems software design would be 1,175,917,000. King County inspection and city support would be 60,000. And wash start expenditure would be three, uh, twenty thousand. Total project cost would be three million eight hundred thirty-six hundred and thirty-nine dollars. I highlighted the items um, which which are new or increased costs. Options considered. Uh, option one: approved to transfer the traffic impact fee funds and expenditure increase in the amount of one hundred and seventy thousand for the citywide adaptive traffic signal control ITS improvement, phase one and two and phase three project. Option two would be do not authorize to transfer the traffic impact fee funds and expenditure in the amount of 170,000 for the citywide adaptive traffic signal control ITS improvement phase one and two and phase three project and provide direction to staff. Mayor's recommendation. The mayor recommends forwarding option one to the November 17, 2020 City Council consent agenda for approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Naveen. Any questions from anyone? I know I have a question from a Council President Honda. If anyone else has one, I will go with her first. Then. Oh, me? Yes, you're first. Okay, go ahead. thank you. So uh, the traffic impact fees, could you explain to everyone on council how we get that funding? And I'd like to know how much would be left in that account if we were to transfer this money over. 
and how much we anticipate to add to the account in 2021. Um, Rick Perez, our city engineer, would be the best person to answer that question. I'm going to request him to answer your question. Good evening. Um, so we have currently, um, after this transfer, we have about $70,000 left. Um, over the past three years, we've been getting about $600,000 a year. Obviously that varies with the pace of development. So, um, uh, but given that we're looking at um, developments coming online, uh, with uh, in East Campus um, and Sound Transit inspired development um, that we should be able to make that up pretty quickly, I would suspect. Uh, so what other plans do you have to use this traffic impact fees in 2021? Do you know? Uh, well, that would be that's all laid out in the proposed capital budget, okay. um, which I don't have all the details on yet. Um, okay. And when we get to my next item, I'll go into greater detail about how the impact fee system works. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council President. Any other questions? I mean, I have a question. Sure. So, so that the uh, you have the eighty thousand dollars received. That's the existing city staff. I take it correct. Um, that's the increase. If Actually, had. we had like um, increase. Uh, forty thirty-five or forty-five thousand. We are adding another twenty-five thousand or so. Okay. But that's that's staff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I go that's back. Staffer. Yeah. Yeah. This 80,000 would be the total city staff cost. That's the increased cost. This is the new cost, and this is another increased cost. That would be the total for each uh, cost. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, I see. Councilmember Tran, you have a question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Naveen, I have a questions. Um, so if we are going to transfer this 170,000, uh, then the available amount would be 3,845,000. Yeah. But, right. Uh, but the projected um, estimated cost is only 3,836,139. So the difference is about Eighty-eight hundred dollars. Um, should we transfer a little bit less than that to match us with the estimated cost? Um, I would uh, transfer uh, what we are requesting uh, because as we work through the issues, we'll know more um, uh, after like started implementing some of those things. Um, that's what I would recommend at this point of time. Okay. My follow-up question is, um, we have $80,000, uh, as a construction contingency. Can we use that amount? Um, I'm keeping that one in case if I run into some unforeseen conditions as we're working through this washed out signal interceptions. If I don't do it, I have to stop the project and I have to come back to the council to get the money and restart the project. That's why I'm holding on to that construction contingent, which would cause the I, delay. I see. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, I think we're good. I'll look for a motion, if you have one. Uh, Mr. Chair, let me try to find my motion. Okay, got it. I move to forward the transfer of traffic impact fee fund and expenditure increase for the citywide adaptive traffic signal control, ITS improvement, phase one, 
and two and phase three project to November 17, 2020 consent agenda for approval. And it's a second by me. So we have a motion by Councilmember Tran, seconded myself. Any other questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 2-0. Thank you. Naveen, you have the next one too. Yeah. Uh, it is our item C, 2020 pavement marking citywide project acceptance. Good evening, Chair Baruso, uh, Council President Honda, and uh, uh, Council members. For the record, I'm Naveen Chandra, Senior Capital Engineer, Public Works Department. I'm here to present 2020 payment marking citywide project acceptance. Policy questions. Should the City Council accept the 2020 payment marking citywide project con constructed by Apply A Line LLC as complete? Background. Prior to release of retainage, on a public works construction project, the city council must accept the work as complete to meet the State Department of Revenue, State Department of Labor and Industries, and Employment Security Department requirements. Contract estimated expenditures. Approved budget was $33,402. Final construction amount is $30,316.50. The balance is uh, $3,085.50. The project budget was approved by the city council on May 19, 2020, including the contingency. Options considered, approve the proposed final acceptance of the 2020 payment marking citywide project constructed by Apply Line LLC in the amount of $30,316.50 as complete. Option two, do not approve proposed final acceptance of the 2020 payment markings Citywide project constructed by Apply A Line LLC in the amount of $30,316.50 as complete and provide direction to staff. Mayor's recommendation. The mayor recommends forwarding option one to the November 17, 2020 City Council consent agenda for approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Nabi. Any questions? Uh, Councilmember Tran, you had, okay, you put your hand down. Thank you. Okay. Hearing you see none, uh, we'll go, I can make the motion. So I move to forward to propose final acceptance of the 2020 payment markings citywide project of number 17, the 2020 consent agenda for approval. I will second that. I have a motion and second. Any your discussion on the motion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 2 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. We're going to move on to item D, uh, which is John. Okay, we'll be doing this one the Southwest 320th Street Preservation Project and it's a bid ward. Go ahead, John. South, South 320th Street? Uh, yes. Oh, okay, Chair Baruso um, and Council and Committee members, my name is John Mulkey. I am a cap senior capital engineer for the City of Federal Way. I am introducing the um, South 320th Street. Here it is. South 320th Street Preservation Approval Forward. And let me get straight down here. Policy question, uh, should the council award the Southwest 320th Street Preservation Project to the lowest responsive responsible bidder? The cost for the South, financial impacts, the South, the cost for the Southwest 320th Street Preservation Project is included within the approved budget under the Public Works Capital Project Number 214. In accordance with the approved budget, this item is funded by a grant from FHWA in amount of $518,020 and the remainder by MVET funds. Upon completion of the Southwest 320th Street Preservation Project, no other costs are anticipated. Funding requirements for operations and maintenance of infrastructure is reviewed and adjusted as required during the budget process. 
Here's a vicinity map showing the location of Southwest Returning Street Preservation Project. And it's between 11th Avenue Southwest and 3rd Place Southwest on that area. Click. So background information. Under the PRS, PRSC Contingency Program, a 2019 National Highway System, NHS federal funds were awarded to ready projects for the overlaying ADA retrofit of Southwest to 20th Street from 15th to 3rd place Southwest. Five bids were received and open on October 8, 2020 for the Southwest to 20th Street Preservation Project. And you can see the attached bid tabulation summary. The lowest responsive responsible bidder is Miles Resources LLC with a total bid of $583,280.05. Staff reviewed the bids received and they were below the engineer's estimate and within budget. So the, our available funding is with the federal grant of $518,020 and the MVET funds for a total available budget of $919,020. And estimated expenditures, including design, construction costs, contingency, and construction management totals of $752,616.86, which leaves a project, project budget surplus of $166,403. So in this project, construction is anticipated to start in the spring of 2021 with an estimated substantial completion date in September, summer of 2021. So the options considered. Number one, award the Southwest 320th Street Preservation Project to Miles Resources LLC, the lowest responsive responsible bidder in the amount of $583,288.05, and approve a 10% contingency of $58,328.81 for a total of $641,616.86 and authorize the mayor to execute the contract. Or two, reject all bids for the Southwest 320th Street Preservation Project and direct staff to rebid the project and return to committee for further action. The mayor's recommendation, the mayor recommends forwarding option one to the November 17th, 2020 City Council Consent Agenda for approval. And I'm available for any questions. Thank you, John. Is there any questions? Okay. I don't see any, so let's so take a motion. Okay, I can make a motion, Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair, I move to, Mr. Chair, I move to forward option one to the uh, November 17, 2020 City Council meeting consent agenda for approval. Now second that. Oh, Council Member Moore is here. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion by Council Member Tran, seconded by Council Member Moore. Welcome. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing to see none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Thank you. John, you have the next one too, the Southwest 356th Street Preservation Project. And yes, what was Thank yours? You. Okay, let me start this one up. And then we need to go to that one. Share screen. Okay. All right, so this is Southwest 366th Street Preservation Project approval to award. It's gonna be very similar to our last one. So, so the policy question is, should the council award the Southwest 356th Street Preservation Project to the lowest responsive responsible bidder? Financial impacts. The cost to the city for the Southwest 356th Street Preservation Project was included within the approved budget under the Public Works Capital Project number 215. In accordance with the approved budget, this item is funded by a grant from the FHWA in the amount of 810,000 and the remainder from REIT and MVEC funds. Upon completion of the Southwest 360 Preservation Project and other costs are anticipated, funding requirements for operations and maintenance of infrastructure is reviewed and just as required during the budget process. And here's our vicinity map showing the overlay between 15th and 4th on 356th Street. Background information. Under the 2019 National Highway System NHS Asset Management um, Competition, the city was awarded grant funding for the overlaying ADA retrofit of Southwest 356th Street from 15th Avenue to 4th Place Southwest. Four bids were received in open October 8, 2020 for the Southwest 356th Street Preservation Project, and you can see the attached bid tabulation summary. The lowest responsive responsible bidder is Lakeside Industries with a total bid of $940,089.30. Staff reviewed the bids received and they were below the engineer's estimate and within budget. 
So again, our available funding with the FHW grant and that these REIT fees for our total amount of 1,384,000. Estimated expenditures with design, construction, 10% construction contingency, and construction management total $1,194,898.23. So our, that shows with a budget per surplus of $189,102. Construction is anticipated to start in spring of 2021 with an estimated substantial completion date in the summer of 2021. The options considered are one, authorized staff to complete the design and bid, oh, this is incorrect. Oh, dang it. Um, I'm gonna go back to that previous slide, but the options available, do we have a copy of can read it off of of the, um, uh, shoot, I'm sorry, I messed that I up. Ha I, John, um, I have the uh, options if you want me to read Okay, them. can you please read those because that's an incorrect, the options were not correct, those were from the bid. Um, so it, the options are to, for approval of award or rejection of the bids. If you could read those, please. I apologize. Okay, well, let me read and make sure that this one's straight too. So it's what I have in the last copy. Award to Southwest 356 Street Preservation Project, Lakeside Industries Incorporate, the lowest responsible, responsible bidder in the amount of $940,800.30 and approve a 10% contingency of $94,008.93 for a total of $1,034,098.23 and authorize the mayor to execute the contract. Correct. Right, number two. Okay, option two, reject all bids for the Southwest 356 Street Preservation Project and direct staffs rebid the project and return to the committee for further action. Correct. Thank you. Is that correct? Thank you. Yes. Thank so you. I have any. Thank you, Jim. Any questions? I have a question from Council President Hong. Thank you. Um, so if there is money left over that you don't need to spend on this, would that be the REIT money that isn't spent? Um, How does that work? I'm actually not sure how that is exactly supposed to work, and maybe E.J. Walsh might be able to answer that, our director of public works. Yeah, so we spend the grant funding first um, and then the match. So when we under, when a project comes in under budget, we have to look at how the grant was structured, if the grant structure has a set requirement. Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, this one typically does not. So we would spend the most restrictive money first so it would be grant and then in this case it would be mbat and then REIT would be third as you correctly alluded to okay good to know thank you thank you any other questions okay hearing and seeing none i will take a motion actually mr jerry do have a question if i may yes go ahead that's more go yeah ahead. Um, and this is for either John or, or EJ. So just kind of looking at the financial backgrounds, I just want to make sure I fully understand. Um, I see that um, there is a, a federal grant, uh, FHWA grant, uh, that's being utilized for that $810,000 to MVET um, funds. Um, so that revenue is being used to kind of fund this as well. Is that right, John? Okay, good. Yes. Um, and then, uh, and then obviously we're we're using REIT funds, um, so and that's where we're getting the one point three million. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm clearly seeing that and whatnot. So I, I appreciate you clarifying that. Thanks, John. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that then, I guess, could entertain motion. Take a motion. Yes, one, Mr. Chair, I, Go ahead. I move to, to forward option one to the November 17, 2020 City Council uh, meeting consent agenda for approval. Oh, what's second? A second. That? Had motion moved uh, by Councilmember Moore, second by Councilmember Tran. Any other questions to the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Thank you. John, I think you have the next two still. So you're, you're, yep. you're still with us. Yes, number so three. So item F, 
Uh, horizontal curve warning signs, bid award. Okay. Here, this one, and then this one, and then this one, and share screen, and that one. Okay. 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 So now, um, again, thank you again, Chair Bruzzo and Council members. Um, I'm presenting the horizontal curve warning signs approval to award. Again. So this is an example of horizontal curve warning signs and what we are doing. And the policy question is, should the council award the horizontal curve warning signs project to the lowest responsive responsible debtor? Financial impacts, this project was included and is projected to be completed within the approved budget under capital project number 218. In accordance with the approved budget, this project is funded by a federal grant in the amount of $323,800 and the remainder in miscellaneous capital street funds and vet and REIT. Upon completion of this project, ongoing costs associated with operations and maintenance will be performed and funded through traffic sign maintenance. Funding requirements for operation and maintenance of infrastructure is reviewed and adjusted as required during the budget process. Background information. This project collected data determined and will install the appropriate signage to upgrade the current METC standard curve warning signs citywide. 10 bids were received in open on October 15, 2020 for the horizontal curve warning signs project and you can see the bid tab. The lowest responsive responsible bidder is Transportation Systems Inc. with a total bid of $78,960. Staff reviewed the bids received and they're below the engineer's estimate and within budget. So you can see our funding and expenditures. Project estimated expenditures with the, included a ball bank study to determine uh, the slope and the curve speeds and the design of the signs uh, 2020 construction costs, 10% contingency and construction management by city staff, total $184,076. And available funding are from the federal grant and miscell miscellaneous capital street funds um, of 46 for a total project of 328,400 budget and a budget surplus of $143,924. And construction is anticipated to start in the winter of 2021 with an estimated substantial completion date in spring of 2021. So the options considered are to award the horizontal curve warning signs to Transportation Systems Inc., the lowest responsive responsible bidder in the amount of $78,960 and approve a 10% contingency of $7,896 for a total of $86,856 and authorize the mayor to execute the contract. Number two, reject all bids for the horizontal curve warning signs and direct staff to rebid the project and return to committee for further action. The mayor recommends for the option one to the November 17th, 2020 city council consent agenda for approval. And I'm available for any questions. Thank you, John. I believe I had a question again, the council no, president Honda, you can go ahead and start. Thank you very much. Can you please go back to the uh, slide with all the costs? Oh, I have to funding. go back through it again, so I'm going to restart. But yes, I can do that. Uh, well, that's oh, that's okay. I. It seems that there's quite a bit of money um, funding left over after the estimated costs. So I was yeah. wondering how that happened and if they're... I'm getting it up again. Close that. There we go. And let me get to those budget numbers again for you. And I, and okay. I saw that Thank too. You. I was kind of wondering. There we that. go. Thank you. So okay. I like so, I like to see so much money left over, but I'm wondering how that that could have happened. Well, the bids were tremendously lower than anticipated. I mean, we actually had a, a wide range of bids on this project. Some of them were closer to one our estimated engineers estimate of the ten bids, and then. The one that came in was substantially lower than all of the other bids um, by a tremendous, by a large amount. Um, but it was, there was, uh, that's basically the cost of the project was much lower than we anticipated it by that bidder. Um, so our anticipated, I think, estimated, you know, was closer to $220,000 on our end. With our engineer's estimate. So are we allowed to keep the extra funding or does that go back to uh, the federal grant? No, that's a federal grant. Um, the MVET and REIT funds were 
solely spent on the design side and it's 100% grant funded for construction. So they will just give us the amount of money we spend on construction. So it's 100% funded by grant, but we won't be able to get any extra money from that. So okay. council president, we're actually having a discussion with them right now. We're trying to get them to transfer the money to another safety project. Um, but that okay. is something they would have to grant us permission to do. Um, that's not something we have a right to. Uh, John is absolutely correct that by the letter of the grant, um, the unspent money just goes right back. But we are trying to work with them and, and keep that money in the city. Okay. I'm sure we have places we could use it. Right. And absolutely. This, this project actually completed all the signs for the entire city that we would need. So there was no way we would actually could expand this project under the horizontal curve warning signs to make any more work for it or increase the scope of the project because we are being comprehensive with the, with the project. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. John, can you go to uh, this, this chair? Can you get the timeline again to get all these up? Is there a timeline? I can't remember. There's a end date or we have it's, a timeline. We only expect it to take 30 working days. It's not that many signs. We were actually, our sign inventory that was actually in current was in fairly good condition and fairly well. We didn't have to add the amount of signs that we anticipated. That was part of it from the original cost, but it, we should be able to fully get everything done with, without any problem in a fairly short amount of time. Like I said, six weeks. Okay. Sounds good. There'll be a time. Order the signs, but other than that, thank you. Do you know if you had a customer input? Thank you. <laughs> I just changed my hand. I'm I see it. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, I'll take motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to forward option one to the November 17, 2020 uh, City Council meeting consent agenda for approval. There a second? I'll second that. There is a motion by Council Member Tran and seconded by Council Member Moore. Any other discussion? Hearing seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Okay, John, I think you have one more. One and more. And at the South, South 348 Street entrance sign, final oh. acceptance. All right, South 348 Street entrance sign project acceptance. I'm presenting now for council. The policy question is, should the council accept the South 348 Street entrance sign constructed by Federal Way Sign LLC as complete? Here's a picture of the sign completed. And it's got the new stack and the um, pedestrian deterrent and everything that was exactly designed. As So financial project impacts this is the acceptance of construction is complete. Therefore, no additional funds are proposed to be spent as part of this agenda item. Background information. This project constructed a new LED entrance sign in the median of South 348th Street between Enchanted Parkway and 16th Avenue South and Pacific Highway South. The sign is visible to eastbound and westbound traffic and provides information on upcoming events within the city, along with the current sign on South 320th Street. Prior to release of retainage of a public works construction project, the city council must accept the work as complete to meet State Department of Revenue and State Department of Labor and Industries requirements. The South 348 Street entrance sign contract with Federal Way Sign LLC is complete. The final construction amount is $81,851, which is $4,9240 below the $85,943.40, including contingent budget that was approved by the city council on May 19, 2020. The project was funded with the hotel and motel lodging tax. So option to consider our authorized final acceptance of the South 348 Street entrance sign is constructed by Federal Way Sign LLC in the amount of 81,851 or number two. Do not authorize acceptance of the South 348 Street entrance sign as constructed by Federal Way Sign LLC in the amount of $81,851 and provide direction to staff. The mayor recommends for the option one to the November 17th, 2020 city council consent agenda for approval. And questions. Thank you, John. Any questions? Sign looks great, by the way. 
No questions. Okay, so I'll take a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to forward option one to the November 17th, 2020 uh, consent agenda for approval. There a second. Second. Motion by Councilmember Moore and seconded by Councilmember Tran. Any discussion on the motion? You're saying that all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Thank you, John. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I know it was long, but. Rick, um, Ms. Perez, this, this one is yours, item H, Ordinance on Transportation Impact Fees, Code Amendment. Yes, uh, good evening, council members. Um, so here to talk about the transportation impact fee proposal. Um, and um, I do have a few introductory remarks, um, but this is the project team that worked on this. Um, and uh, in 2008, we selected Fair and Peers slash Mirai, who was a predecessor firm, to develop the city's first transportation impact fee, which was adopted in 2009 and implemented in 2010. The benefits of that system include predictability for development, um, consistency and fairness between developments, and flexibility for the city in funding um, needed projects. So we also selected Fair and Peers to provide this update to the rate study and code language. Um, this reflects changes in the capital improvement program, the comprehensive plan, and the growth management act. So the financial impact uh, to the city is impact fees can be used to fund capacity projects that are needed to uh, accommodate planned growth. Um, we also have an administrative fee, which is added to provide periodic updates to the impact fee system, such as what we're presenting here tonight. Um, I will now, uh, let's see. So the policy question before us is, should the city council adopt an adjustment to the transportation impact fee, which is code section 1991? And I'll turn that over to Sarah Keenan, our project manager with the consultant team. And she is accompanied by Kendra Brayland, who is the principal in charge. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Rick. Um, yes, as, as Rick said, I'm Sarah Keenan. I'm with Fair and Peers, and I was the project manager um, on our end. So this is a list of what I'll be going through today. I'm going to start with a brief introduction to transportation impact fees. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail about our methodology and then our program recommendations. And then I'll show you kind of a, a screenshot of our fee schedule as well as um, why we adopted a city center reduction. And I'll show you some examples of neighboring cities in King County and Pierce County. And then I'll get to code updates and there'll be time for questions at the end. So first, what are transportation impact fees? So they're one-time charges paid by new developments. And this was authorized as part of the 1990 Growth Management Act. And it can be used to fund transportation improvements and specifically transportation improvements that add capacity to the transportation network. So they are not allowed to fund any, um, any transportation improvement that's needed because a, an existing facility is not currently up to standards. And right now the city's um, transportation impact fee is $3,616 per trip end. And these funds, once they're collected, they must be used within 10 years and on public streets and roads. And they can only be used to fund projects that are already adopted as part of the capital facilities element. And we've prepared quite a few of these fees and we've seen more and more lately, um, more cities are starting to adopt um, and fund multimodal projects as part of this um, funding. And so that would be bicycle or pedestrian projects. So here's kind of our methodology and I'll go into more detail on this in the next few slides, but really we, we start with a list of projects and we kind of remove um, anything that's more safety or maintenance related. And we go through a couple other steps to remove some costs from this project list. And we end with an eligible cost and we divide it by the expected growth in trips over the next 20 years. And what we end with is a maximum allowable fee. And so that's what I'm going to present to you today. So for the project list, we started with the 2009 uh, transportation impact fee project list. And there were 35 projects on that list and we removed 15 
And the reason we removed those projects is because they were either completed or they were already removed um, due to council action. So there were 20 remaining projects from the 2009 project list. And we had some cost es escalation for various region reasons um, since the 2009 update. So that's included here as well. And then we added 22 new projects and those projects came from the transportation improvement program as well as the capital improvement project list. And again, these are projects that are adding capacity to the roadway. And we ended up with, I think it was uh, 520 million as the total, uh, total eligible project list fee. Um, and here's just a map of those projects. So you can see they're kind of all over the city. There are corridor projects, which are in green here, um, just intersection projects are the red dots. And then we had a couple um, non-motorized improvements. So relating specifically to bike, bicycles and pedestrians, and those are in orange here. And so this, uh, this flow chart kind of goes into more detail about um, the actual numbers. So we had the original project list at $520 million. Um, as I mentioned before, we can't use this, this TIF program to fund anything that's not currently up to standards. So it could be a missing sidewalk or an intersection that's not currently meeting standards. And we have a methodology for removing some of that cost. Um, so that was about 53 million. And then we also can't um, use this funds, use these funds to invest in anything that might be needed due to outside of city growth. So for example, um, a driver's kind of passing through federal way um, without making a stop. Um, that happens and we don't, we can't use funds um, from this program to, to kind of um, improve a roadway that might be needed due to that. So we removed about 209 million because of that. And then we also had a balance um, in the transportation impact fee um, funds and some of these projects had already received funding through the TIF program. So we, moved, we removed some funds for that. And in the end, we ended up with 258 million and it's about half of the original project list is actually eligible to be funded through this program. Um, so that's kind of, that's the numerator that you'll see in this equation, the 258 million. And then to get to the denominator, um, it's the growth in trips that we expect over the next 20 years. So from 2020 to 2040, um, we expect some increase in land use in the city of Federal Way. So about 14% increase in households and about a 35% increase in employment. We have some standard calculation and we estimate that's going to be about 11,363 new vehicle trips during the PM peak hour. So when we do this calculation, we get uh, $22,703 per trip end. And as you can see, it's quite a bit higher than the current fee, but again, this is just the maximum that you're allowed to charge. And here's an example of what the fee schedule looks like. So we have a cost per trip end and we have kind of a different rate. So we make it pretty easy for developers to calculate this fee that they would actually have to pay based on a unit of measure. It could be a dwelling unit or square footage. So we have 41 typical uses in, in the schedule. Um, if a developer is coming in and they have something that's not um, on this list, they can do their own independent study. And we also provide a discount for city center. Um, the reason for this is that there's more dense development in that area. And we might expect to be able to make uh, multiple trips or multiple stops in one trip, um, or maybe a walk or bike to that area instead. So we provide a 30 to 40% reduction for specific um, eligible uses within city center. And we wanted to show you kind of what other cities are charging. Um, so you can see your existing fee, federal ways, it's kind of on the lower end now. Um, of course, I presented the maximum allowable rate, which is kind of, uh, towards the higher end now. Um, you'll see Sammamish is charging close to 15,000, but cities like Bellevue, Renton, Linwood are around seven to 8,000. And so as part of this study, so we, we calculated the maximum allowable fee. We also provided some code updates for you. Um, so some of them were pretty straightforward. Um, we're now referencing the 2020 study. We updated some definitions. Um, we clarified what change of use means. Uh, change of use pays for an increase in trips. Um, 
we added some language to allow certified planners um, rather than just engineers to provide a fee calculation. And um, we removed an exemption that was no longer required due to the timing of originally um, adopting this program. Um, a, a couple other things. Um, Um, so, so the impact fee can only be used um, for projects that are listed in the rate study. Um, a few updates due to changes in state law. And we have an annual escalation for the fee based on the CPI and a 5% administration fee. So those were all of the code updates that we provided. Um, so in summary, um, basically the, the proposed fee that we have here fairly assesses the traffic burden and associated costs. It's addressing the um, most recent updates to the TIP and CIP project lists. It promotes responsible development. And we'll be doing a similar presentation for Planning Commission later this week. Um, so I'm gonna hand this off to Rick now. Thank you. So big question is, okay, how much do we charge if we can charge up to 22,000 legally? Um, so, when we first adopted this, we had come to the conclusion that we could charge around $9,800 per trip and obviously we went significantly lower than that. So um, what that did is um, provide funding for 28% of that total eligible project need. Uh, the remainder, 72%, would be provided by the city, hopefully by grants, but can't always count on that. Um, so the new rate study identifies an eligible project list of 520.2 million. Um, the higher, now, setting the fees is clearly a council policy decision. Um, a higher rate may deter some development and a lower fee means you're increasing the amount that uh, the public as a whole is subsidizing development and potentially creating uh, traffic safety concerns. So, um, the mayor's recommendation is to maintain that same percentage of funding, 28%, which would yield a $6,311 impact fee per trip end. So um, options are to forward the proposed ordinance to the first reading on November 17th, 2020, or do not forward the proposed ordinance to council and provide direction to staff. The mayor's recommendation it's option one to forward the proposed ordinance to first reading and increase the transportation impact fee rate to $6,311 per evening peak hour trip. End. And with that, we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Rick and Sarah. Uh, I do have one question for Sarah real quick. Yes. Yeah. Hey, sir. Um, so I noticed on, on the study, when you do just the PM peak only, is that is that the norm? Is it why you, you don't do one in the morning too when some that travel or is just only evening time? Yeah, so it's typically done, or that's how we do it in the, um, in the evening. It's because that's when it's usually the peak hour. So we try to evaluate when traffic conditions are, are the worst. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I know I have a question from Council President Honda. You are up. Your hands up. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, so how does sound transit fit into paying these type of impact fees? Do, is there a, do they pay the impact fees? And if they do, how is that decided upon? So um, that should be addressed in the development agreement, but uh, essentially they are mitigating under NEPA and SEPA, their impacts. So when we have um, agent, lead agencies um, doing their own impact analysis, we can either uh, have them pay the fee or negotiate uh, an agreement as to how much they're, um, how they're mitigating their impacts. Um, so we have that flexibility. Um, Ryan, do you recall? Uh, Ryan Midland is here up next. So how are we assessing impact fees to sound transit or are they just 
do, mm -hmm. they have that explicit list of projects. Like yeah. That they have. Okay. So yeah, um, in exchange for that, we had negotiated in the development agreement that they would provide um, certain roadway improvements um, in order to mitigate their impacts on the system. Okay. Um, and then I have one other question. It is, um, uh, Sarah mentioned that if a vehicle is just passing through town, that that's not counted. How do you know that it's just passing through town? Are there the roads or streets in Federal Way that most that most vehicles just pass through and they don't stop? So um, that's based on our travel demand model, um, which is actually a, a subset of the whole regional model from Puget Sound Regional Council. And so, um, so it's kind of an educated guess as to exactly how that's working out based on the way the model is calibrated. But we look at, um, we can isolate in the model the number of trips that are being generated within the city. So, um, and then compare that to the total number of trips entering the city. Okay. I just found it an interesting statement, so. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other questions? So this, uh, just another question. So the study goes that went from you took it to 2040. Yes. Is that right? I just don't make sure. Uh, yeah. Yes, it, it was uh, looking 20 years out to 2040. Okay, 20. Thank you. Okay, that's wanted to know. Thank you. Any other questions? Actually, I have one more question. Yes, go ahead. So where will this put us in the list of the cities? Like, uh, <clears throat> for instance, what does Auburn charge? They were right next to us on the graph. Can we go back to that graph at all? Thank you. There we go. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll speak to that. That'll put you right about where Fife is charging today. Um, that's very similar to what they're charging. So you can see you'd be a bit above Auburn and Kent um, and Des Moines, um, but below uh, Bellevue, Renton, and Linwood. Um, I would put you know a slight kind of asterisk uh, near Kent in that I know they are looking to update their impact fee program in 2021. Um, I you know, can't advise of where they're going to go with that rate, um, but know that that is a moving piece. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Chair you. Bar Chair Baruso, just to yes. clarify the one, on, uh, the one comment that I heard. So the study goes out with the projects and proposed development through 2040. We will need to update this prior to 2040. This has a much shorter lifespan before we're required to update up. Okay. So, That's right. I was kind of wondering if we were going to do anything with that because it was 20 years. I said, all right, all right. Yeah, so 2040 is the project list. Typically, you have to update this okay. a little bit more frequently than that. Okay, thank you, EJ. Any other questions? So I don't see any. All righty, seeing none, hearing none, I'll take a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to forward the proposed ordinance to the first reading on November 17, 2020. There's second. a motion. Is there a second? Motion by Councilmember Tran, second by Councilmember Moore. Are any other questions to the motion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sarah down to item I and that's Ryan for the ordinance on Federal Way link extension alteration number one.
All right. Good evening, Chair Baruso, committee members, uh, Council President Honda, and Council members. Uh, my name is Ryan Medlin. I'm the City Liaison to Sound Transit, and uh, my first presentation tonight is going to be about a proposed change to the Federal Way Link Extension Development Agreement. So what we'll talk about is I'm going to remind some, us about some of the project history and how we got to this point. Uh, some of the background about what the issue, where the issue came from that we are here talking about today, a little bit about what the proposed change is, and then the process and next step for implementing that change. So the policy question tonight is, should the City Council approve the change to the Federal Way Link Extension Project Development Agreement between Sound Transit and the City of Federal Way? Just to run through some of the project history that I'm sure we all know quickly. Um, in 2016, a Federal Way Link Extension was funded through Sound Transit 3. In 2017, a project alignment that followed Interstate 5 closely was approved by the Sound Transit Board after um, previously having been recommended by resolution but to by the city. Um, in 2019, the city executed a transit way agreement and adopted the project development agreement that permitted the project to move forward as a design build infrastructure project. Uh, later in 2019, Sound Transit selected Keywood Infrastructure West as the design build contractor and issued them a notice to proceed. So the within the development agreement, uh, we granted them several code modifications. Um, in order to advance their design. Um, one of those modifications was to not have active uses on the ground floor of the parking garage. Um, and as mitigation for this, uh, Sound Transit agreed to install a city fiber optic line um, parallel with the length of the alignment. Um, in short, what the modification did was it allowed the parking garage to be only a parking garage and not have um, any other use that would typically, is a stand is in our design guidelines for the city center um, for uses that have ground floor parking. Um, the development agreement included a conceptual alignment of that fiber optic, as well as a description on how the fiber optic would need to meet city standards. Um, a condition of note was that the development agreement called for it to be placed in washed out right away adjacent to the transit way initially. Uh, and under these parameters, the design build contractor was instructed to include the fiber optic in their design. Um, as design progressed, uh, certain issues started to become apparent. Um, as noted, the original intent of some of, of the conceptual alignment was to have it in washed out right away adjacent to the guideway. Um, there were many challenges in terms of it get us getting at the access we needed to the fiber optic in WashDOT right away, as well as concerns from WashDOT on uh, where it would need to be installed. So Sound Transit explored options for installing it in the transit way and identified a number of engineering concerns that they had related to wetlands, um, walls that support the guideway, and that they had to stay within their construction footprint. Um, and that the city was in that the in the environmental review would be the responsibility of the city if they had to go outside that footprint. Uh, what the proposed change is is to no longer require Sound Transit to install this fiber optic as part of their construction project, but to switch it to a fee in lieu, um, which essentially provides funding to the city to construct a project that has comparable functionality as the fiber optic that was envisioned in the development agreement. Um, this allows us to maintain the intent of the original code modification because we would be receiving the same benefit from the project as we would if Sound Transit did the, pro did the construction themselves. Um, and generally this was found to be a mutually beneficial solution to the design challenges mentioned. So just to kind of highlight what we're talking about on the left the thicker green line uh, is essentially the alignment along I-5 and the fiber optic was proposed to parallel this alignment either in the transit way or in wash dots right of way. And the line on the right is a concept that was developed for the be the basis of a city cost estimate and relies only on city right of way 
to install uh, the fiber optic in that same north-south parallel to the guideway. Um, both of these achieve the goal of getting from 272nd Street in the north uh, to the city center area and allow the city to have a parallel fiber optic line um, <clears throat> to provide some redundancy to an existing line that's along Highway 99. Um, so the one on the concept that the city estimate is based on is not what's under review today and isn't locked in, but goes to show what, um, what the funding would allow to be constructed. So some key facts and findings from this is that the fee in lieu amount is based on a construction estimate that was prepared by the city and by city staff, and it was not adjusted following Sound Transit's review and their own internal cost testing, estimating of this. Um, the amount includes an allowance uh, for design and engineering of the path. So again, that was a conceptual path that the estimate is based on, but the final path has not been designed yet. And the amount that we are discussing um, in the agreement, which is $2,647,985, does include an allowance for the design of that fiber optic line. So. It's also worth noting designing a custom fiber optic path compared to one that is limited to sound transit's guideway alignment has the opportunity to provide a better benefit to the city. We'd have better access to it. We'd have flexibility and complete control versus being predominantly reliant on another government agency's control of the land, their access requirements, and their basically their timing for access it, accessing to because if we ever did need to access fiber optic installed on in the transit way, some of that would be limited to their to hours based on their operations. Um, and also this agreement uh, change keeps with the original intent of the project development agreement. It maintains the same code modification for Sound Transit's project, but it also gives us the same uh, mitigation benefits for allowing that code modification. Um, all other effects, conditions, and requirements of the agreement remain unchanged. So this is very uh, limited action that's being discussed today. Uh, some process just so to go over what changing the development agreement means. Section 25.8 of the development agreement uh, states it can only be amended or altered by written authorization by both parties. Um, who those parties are depends on internal um, it's different for both agencies. For us, that's dictated by 1985-200 in our code, um, which states that we have to review a change to the agreement um, following the same process as a new development agreement. Um, so for that reason, we're here today to discuss it at LUTC um, and should the committee choose to take action to forward it to the November 17th council for a public hearing and a first reading. Um, because ultimately this change will have to be enacted by ordinance. Um, on Sound Transit side, they have to complete their own internal contract change order and process to approve this change um, consistent with their own policies. Um, so the option that we are here to discuss today is for an action by the Land Use and Transportation Committee to set a public hearing and uh, ordinance first reading at the November 17th Council. Um, Hypothetically, the next step would be an ordinance second reading for enactment on, at the December 1st Council. Um, after both city and sound transit processes have been completed, the two parties would sign uh, the document that implements this change. And once the document is executed, the effect would be that the city will no longer require sound transit to build fiber optic as part of the project while also allowing them to enjoy the code modification that they've been granted and uh, Sound Transit will pay the fee in lieu amount agreed to to the city. Um, so in summary, um, in 2019, following the execution of the project development agreement, Sound Transit instructed their design build contractor to design the new city fiber optic per the agreement. Um, in the design change, significant challenges emerged that resulted in the parties exploring their options. Um, having the city construct a fiber optic path using existing right away emerged as an alternate solution to achieve um, comparable functionality of the fiber optic path. And the question before 
uh, City Council will be whether to enact an ordinance allowing this change to the agreement. So with that, um, our options for the committee are to approve the proposed ordinance forwarding it to the City Council for a public hearing and a first reading on November 17th, or reject the proposed ordinance and provide direction to staff. The mayor recommends option one to approve the proposed ordinance. And with that, I will take any questions. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, questions, we have one from uh, Council President Honda. Thank you, thanks for the report. So um, I believe this question probably goes to EJ, but uh, whoever can answer it would be awesome. So if we approve this, and we get uh, this money from Sound Transit and it goes into the public works budget, I believe. Will it be protected so it's there when we need it to build this? Yeah, so that's an excellent question. Um, yes, it is designated in the agreement that it has to go into the 306 fund, which is the capital improvement program. Um, which is a restricted account. So from a financial standpoint, it will we already have accounts set up specific to sound transit within 306. So it will tie out to that line. That's the same way we accept grant revenue for projects. Um, so it will it will go into that restricted account. It can only be used for this purpose. On the timing question, uh, this project has to be built um, prior to the opening of the station. So we have to be done by 2024, which is basically the same timeline Sound Transit had agreed to originally. So we are we are taking okay. that responsibility. And this will cover all the costs, so we won't in, incur any additional costs that need to come out of our, our funding? Yeah, so, so like Ryan said, staff put this together and Sound Transit um, reviewed it and came up with our own independent cost estimate. We went through a couple of negotiations and ultimately they agreed to fund it at the level the city initially requested. Okay, thank you. And I should thank point you. out, uh, Director Fitchner is also here tonight. If you have any, because I can't answer questions about fiber optics. Thomas, did you want to speak on anything at all on this? Hello, I'll, uh, I'll talk to him. Oh, wait. Uh, Ryan did it for. I know he's getting it done. Too much echo. Pleasures in Zoom. All right, there we go. <laughs> there you go, Thomas. Thank you. I was hoping that would work, but uh, but it did not. Um, so as far as uh, I, I'm not muted. Yeah, it's um, Ryan did a really good job uh, explaining kind of the purpose behind this as it's an alternative route to um, to our current existing infrastructure that we have along 99. Uh, that goes from the city uh, limit on 272nd all the way down actually to the pretty much the other city limit almost uh, to 356. Um, that all being said, the idea was a redundant path and uh, and this would achieve that uh, not necessarily in the transit guideway like the original intent was, but also uh, along Military Road, which was is another another area to give um, a diverse path in the event that something does happen to our primary route. Um, it, this would be a backup so and you know i think it goes without saying but just to make sure that the committee and council uh, members are aware that, that we use this fiber optic to do a variety of things uh, not only connect other city facilities some of them um, but we also use it for safe city camera systems downtown substations um, as well as um, the the future adaptive traffic signal program will all be running off of this so that's kind of the power behind everything Thank you, Thomas. You're welcome. Any Chair, other I have questions? Any question? 
Yes, go ahead, Councilor Rosenhalda. Uh, my only um, concern is that we have the funding and it's enough funding to complete the project when it's time to complete the project. Yeah, we as staff, we are comfortable with the, the numbers that are okay. presented at Council Basin. Okay. Thank you. EJ staff and, and I worked together, um, and EJ staff pretty much did uh, did their uh, best estimate based on um, similar projects and and also uh, some I think uh, making sure that we would have enough to to uh, build this out in the future. Thank you, Councilmember Kraft. You have a question. Yes, thank you. I would just, so following up on Council President Honda's question, I understand that there's a contingency fee that you all negotiated with Sound Transit. Um, what happens to the funds if we spend less after we complete the project? So the payment to the city is a set amount. So if we spend less, um, there's not, there's no, nothing in the agreement that would dictate that we have to give it back. So I assume stay in the same capital improvements fund that it goes into. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, DJ. Yeah, so we will, and, and as Director Fitchner already alluded to, we've been talking about how to build this out for a little while now, knowing that we were gonna ultimately be having this conversation with council. We will most likely include several alternatives um, to expand it slightly from the alignment that you were shown tonight. Um, so that might be, you know, connect, connecting one additional segment on an additional street to pack highway or something to, to that nature, where we can get some, you know, there, there's a, certainly a purpose behind it. It creates those loops that Thomas was talking about, lets us connect additional infrastructure. But beyond the base bid, we will have several additional schedules with additional work. And if we are lucky enough to come in under budget, um, we will award additional schedules and, and leverage the, the funding that we're receiving to the maximum extent possible to make sure we're using all of it for this purpose. But hopefully that's part of, part of the reason that, frankly, that staff is somewhat excited to, to get this project. Because, um, you know, I, I think we know the city, we know we already own the right of way. Um, so we are, are looking to leverage this a little further than Sound Transit may have been capable of doing. Great, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I see you in here and I'll take a, a motion. Who wants to make one? I, I can make one. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to forward the proposed ordinance changing the Federal Way Link Extension Development Agreement for a public hearing in the first reading on November 17, 2020. Thank you, I will Member. second that. Sure, second. All righty, we have a motion by Councilmember Tran, seconded by Councilmember Moore. Any more discussion on the motion? Hearing seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you, Nanus. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. You have the next item anyway, item J, and you have updates on sound transit. So floor is yours. Not a week at work unless you forget to um, unmute yourself once. All right, apologies for that. Um, thank you, Chair Baruso. Uh, my second presentations are monthly update on sound transit activities in the city of Federal Way. Um, it's a pretty short update as far as the construction goes in part because as we enter the wet season, um, Keyweight is slowing down on new construction activities. So currently they have no additional areas for clearing and grubbing uh, scheduled and 
tentatively they're planning not to start any new areas until spring. Uh, previously, we'd talked about that their next area for clearing was going to be from 272nd South to military. That may still be the case, but I, the schedule's being pushed back um, on account of them not wanting to expose more bare earth um, at this time in the wet season, going into the wet season. So um, they will be finishing up some additional clearing uh, between military and 288th where they have been working. Uh, they stopped hauling dirt from that location because the type of dirt changed and they can no longer use it at the Midway landfill. Um, as far as work downtown, currently Red Robin and Azteca are in the process of being demolished. Uh, Kiwit and the Commons Mall did coordinate to minimize disruption to local businesses during this activity. Um, there are a few smaller structures that still remain to be demolished. They are on hold currently for property transfer reasons. Um, other work activities that are ex is expected to continue in the next few weeks um, is related to utilities, um, including field verification, locating utility services, and planning for finishing up their planning for relocations um, so that they can hit the ground running come um, next, next year's build season. Um, with all the work downtown. So that is Federal Way Link Extension. Uh, with Tacoma Dome Link Extension, they are doing some field verification work over the month of November. Uh, this includes survey and geotechnical evaluations. The work's limited to the areas along the I-5 corridor, um, particularly in the Highway 18 area um, at that interchange. The draft environmental impact statement publication um, and still expected in early 2022, um, although both OMF South and Tacoma Dome continue to face schedule delays um, due to COVID-19. So both those are potentially changing situations. Um, OMF South, uh, the release of the impact statements is expected as early as the first quarter of 2021. Um, and Sound Transit staff is scheduled to be here for a city council study session on November 17th. Uh, they plan to discuss the current status of the OMF South and TDLE projects and the schedule going forward. So with that, I will take any questions you may have. Hey, Ryan. You just said I seen Red Robin going down. I went by it today. Any other questions, comments? Um, I have a question, if no one else does. Yes. Let's go ahead, Council President Hondo. OK, thank you. Uh, Ryan. Is there any work being done at Mark Train Elementary School now that the students are not in the building? So they do not have any work done, work permitted at Mark Twain. They recently concluded negotiations with the school district um, about mitigating for their impacts to the um, school site. So we expect to see um, what they call 60% design plans um, in the next month or so for that work. So um, to answer your question, no, they are not doing any work at that site while the students are not present. They will likely have to coordinate with the school. Do you district. know when they will start to do work there? Um, if I rewind to discussions with them back in April, um, their plan was to do it over the summer months when the students would be out for summer vacation. So if that remains the plan and they're able to stay on their design schedule, um, that would lead me to guess that summer 2021 is when they would like to do it, but I don't know that for sure. That's just putting the pieces together. Um, ultimately, they'll have to coordinate um, whatever their construction school schedule is directly with the school district to avoid those impacts to the students. All right, thank you. Thank oh, you. one more question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. How will we, uh, or is Sound Transit going to let the property owners affected by uh, the OMF South know that we're doing a, that, that the uh, Sound Transit is coming to talk to us on the 17th? Can we get the word out that uh, we'll be having that study session? So I can I can speak to them about emailing their listserv if they would be willing to do that. Um, I 
don't believe that they would do something that broad because they have a lot of people from all over the region on those listservs. But um, I suspect we can reach out directly to the interested property owners at locations. Um, I would need to speak to them and get back to you on how they would go about doing that. Okay, because I, I, I feel it's really important that we keep the public informed of what's going on and uh, this has been pretty quiet for a while. People are getting concerned and I don't want those interested to miss hearing the updates from Stunt Transit about this. A good agree point, and I will speak Agreed. to see what we can work out. Thank you. Any other questions for Ryan? Thank you, Ryan. Thank you very much. And we're going to move on to item K City Center Access Phase One Environmental Process Update Project Update. Rick Perez. Rick, you're back. Yes, I'm back, unfortunately, for you. Um, let's see, pull this up. And for sure. Uh, there we go. All right, yes. So, um, Thought it would be appropriate at this point in time to update you on how the city center access project is going. Um, for anyone not familiar, this is a project that uh, looks to enhance access between I-5 and the city center. And uh, where we are on the project is, um, well, this is where we are. So on November 19th last year, the city council voted to move forward with a planning a modified I-5 interchange with an overcrossing at South 324th Street, an extended I-5 ramp serving 320th and 324th Street. It was described as alternative 2I. And so this is what it looks like. Um, so 324th Street would be extended um, from 23rd to Warehouser Way, this would be a five-lane section up to the interchange, um, roundabouts at the ramp terminals, and then three lanes the rest of the way to Warehouser Way. We would have um, a shared-use path for bicyclists and pedestrians, essentially an extension of the BPA trail. Um, so we're planning on extending that corridor all the way across. Um, so this provides a crossing for I-5, then we'll go up 32nd and then rejoin the BPA corridor. Um, so the interchange would be reconfigured kind of like the interchange in uh, Seattle University District on I-5 at Northeast 45th and 50th, where um, the ramps diverge, the on-ramp and the off-ramp uh, weave uh, over each other, grade separated and then merge back before it all merges back into the main line of the freeway. And that would be true in both directions on I-5. So um, associated with that uh, capacity improvement, we would be looking at converting the outside lanes on 320th to HOV. Um, King County Metro plans on running bus rapid transit um, eventually on the corridor, Route 181. Um, and so this would enhance their ability to maintain schedule on it. So um, there's a lot of different elements associated with this, but um, this just gives kind of an overview. So the benefits of the project are intended to decrease roadway congestion, improve freight mobility, improve emergency response uh, on 320 by diverting some traffic to 324th Street. It would maintain access to and from the city center by improving traffic and transit operations. It would improve non-motorized mobility by providing the 324th overcrossing, improving safety for the general public on 320th quarter by decreasing demand. 
it would protect views by not adding ramp connections that are elevated above the proposed light rail or existing roadways. It would improve safety and mobility for the general traveling public on the freeway and the ramps by reducing queue spillbacks onto the main line of the freeway. And the improvements would allow future bus rapid transit to operate on 320th. So um, we have finalized the level two alternative screening um, with detailed traffic operations models. And uh, the study support team, which is an interdisciplinary um, team with all the agencies represented, also agreed with alternative 2i was the best alternative. So we're moving ahead into more advanced design, um, refining turn lane lengths, uh, verifying that there is no safety issues generated by the design, um, refining the roundabout designs, and minimizing impacts to sound transit and the BPA corridor. Um, the project findings are documented in a draft access revision report, which we tend to call the ARR. So that is under development for review and approval by both WASHDOT and Federal Highways. Uh, preliminary engineering is progressing. And the environmental document, which will be a documented categorical exclusion under the National Environmental Policy Act, which is what that alphabet soup means, uh, will be conducted upon completion of the preliminary engineering. So um, this shows some of the different uh, agency coordination. Um, one hot topic right now is working with BPA and Sound Transit uh, to work out alignments that don't conflict um, because Sound Transit has to relocate BPA towers anyway, but we're hoping that they don't relocate them right in the way of where we need to put roadway. Um, we're looking at making sure we minimize impacts to um, the bog on the east side of I-5. Uh, we're working with the state DOT on um, how the off-ramp, southbound off-ramp, would operate. Um, it's pretty tight under the 317th um, overpass, and so we're looking at fine-tuning that design. And finally, uh, working with IRG to ensure that uh, we're having the right-of-way set aside and don't have to buy buildings and such later on. So um, with respect to rights of entry, so rights of entry allow us to obtain the survey, wetland and stream and cultural information, uh, potholing is utility locating subsurface and perform noise measurements. Um, so we've requested 49 rights of entry and received 22. So we still have 27 property owners to, to uh, get that approval to allow our folks to do their studies for the environmental work. So another big aspect coming up is um, public engagement. So our goals here are to make sure that stakeholders and the public are informed and have meaningful opportunities to participate. Uh, that preliminary design and environmental documentation are clear, accessible, and fair, and meet both national and state requirements. Um, inform and be accessible and maintained informed consent among stakeholders, community members, uh, including outreach to low income, minority and limited English proficient communities. Uh, make sure we're involving potentially affected property owners and residents that are aware of the project, its potential impacts and environmental documentation and feel like the project team is responsive to their comments. Um, identifying public engagement risks early in design and take a proactive approach to addressing, avoiding, or mitigating those risks. So um, we have a draft public engagement framework that includes email and website updates, design meetings, community group meetings, open houses, uh, participation at festivals, and updates to the council. So overview of the uh, public engagement outreach, uh, general public, key property owners, 
area businesses and associations, neighborhoods and residents, seniors and residents with disabilities, community groups, the Korean language community, Spanish language community, low income populations and transit users. So this, uh, if you can see it, is the schedule. So, um, you know, we're right here. Um, and so we're working on the design and then uh, there'll be reviews and updates as they get passed back and forth between our partner agencies. Um, the environmental work will be um, kicking off grandly in March, um, and that will continue through the rest of the project, including the publication of the document, uh, environmental documentation. So we'll be continuing with design meetings. We propose uh, community group meetings in May and June, open houses in June, July, and August. And uh, this is uh, 4th of July here. So um, that is what we're planning on doing for public outreach. And so um, happy to entertain any questions. And uh, we are also interested in your input on the public engagement processes that we proposed here. Thank you, Rick. Um, the public engagement, it looks, it looks, I was just trying to figure out, you know, when you, I think you had a lot of it covered. I'm just trying to think of other agencies um, or another way to do it, but I can't think of any right now. It's pretty comprehensive what you had. So any comments from anyone else? I'll take them. Uh, more. Um, I have a question. Okay, uh, Council President, let me get Council Member Moore first, then I, I'll come to you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Chair um, and Council President Honda. Um, so, Rick, um, so what I heard in terms of uh, public engagement is email and, and walk me through that again. I just want to make sure I hear it again. Um, email and email and website updates. We're having design meetings, we'll have community group meetings, open houses. Um, so one of the festival, fourth of July. Thank you, Rick. And when do you uh, and I can't see the, the calendar, but what when do you foresee public engagement to kind of begin in terms of your schedule? So that will be pretty much this summer. Um, well, yeah, spring and summer. So starting probably in earnest in May and continuing through into August. And so then, I guess where I'm going with this that I'm sure you've thought about is I'm, I'm willing to make a bet that the the virus uh COVID stuff will still be out and about and maybe greg can kind of shed some light on that potentially but i guess my question is that um the type of outreach per, uh efforts that we have planned or you have planned uh seem to fit a non-covid period of time uh what's the plan to engage the public with, um, you know, through the COVID in mind. I mean, even if, even if COVID's finished, I think people will still be apprehensive. So, what's what's the uh, the plan there, Rick? Well, in that case, um, these meetings would occur online, um, primarily. Um, yeah, so we, we did the last open house meeting online um, and did get some good feedback that way. So, um, and um, we'll be looking in particular at trying to outreach to those that don't have internet access. Um, okay. So, um, our sub consultant uh, for public outreach is working on fine tuning that. Okay, good enough. I just wanted to make sure we're uh, considering that perspective. So um, thank you, Rick. Thank, 
council member, I, part of the reason we're here tonight is to seek input from the council members. I mean, we've all been sure. racking our brains trying to come up with ideas of how we can engage the public. Um, and we're, we're asking anybody and everybody what ideas they may have. Um, so that's, you know, part of the input, you know, we're, we're kind of hoping council has some ideas they can share um, on other ways we can reach out to the community and, and what you see as being successful. You know, one, well, I guess coming with an idea is what I'm kind of hearing you say, um, EJ, is um, has one ever thought about texting? Just doing like a mass text and saying, um, kind of alluding people to information and, and directing them to go to a website? Just a thought. We can talk to PRR about it. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Um, that would be my, you, one of my not, suggestions. Uh, yeah, it's an awesome idea. And, and just to be clear, we're not trying to put any council members on the spot. We're uh, sure. You know, it, it's kind of one of those. Everybody's looking for ideas of how we can engage right. the community. So we want to make sure we're asking everybody for any ideas. Sure. And, and, you know, obviously the council members are key stakeholders in that group. And we want to, mm -hmm. you know, give you the opportunity to weigh in of, you know, what do you see that might work? Um, maybe you guys, maybe somebody does have a great idea like that. that we haven't thought of. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think that's one of my suggestions is, is, um, uh, maybe looking into texting as well. Thank you. Hey, hey, uh, Council President Honda, you had a question? Yes, I do. So I have some ideas, um, use channel 21. I think we're, we certainly underuse channel 21. Uh, but we can use channel 21. There's some churches in the area that we could get the word out to. And um, maybe have space in the commons where there's information. And then um, during times for we would expect more people to be in the commons shopping, perhaps on weekends or holidays. Actually, have staff members there to talk with. Hmm. Can you cut out? And I have do have a question. I'd like to, um, if you could remind us how this is being. Yes, you yes you did. Do you want to oh, so forward the you, tail end there? Tell Lynn, you said uh, commons, and then you kind of oh. start fading out. Okay. So um, have space in the commons where we could set up. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Okay, because you were rolling your eyes, so I wasn't sure. No, no, no. I was, I was trying to. I was listening. <laughs> Careful, Greg. Careful. Okay. No, so I was just listening. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> So you know, have, like have a kiosk in the in the in the comments where information can be, and then when we expect more shoppers or more people to be in the comments, actually have a staff member there to answer questions. Okay. And then I was wondering if we could be reminded how this is being funded. So um, yes, I appreciate the suggestions. Um, the funding is entirely city funds at this point, um, and the goal all along has pretty much been to position this project and then um, to get ready for probably a design build project to be funded by WashDOT. So um, when the legislature starts talking about um, a new revenue package that we've got it all nice and tidied up and say, well, here, here's a good project and uh, rely on some lobbying to try and get it in that package. So I have a, another question then. So we could get all this work done and then be waiting for, for some, for a while before we get the funding to do the, the project 
that is a risk and certainly a certain depending on the, how the state gives the money out right so sorry i interrupted um so yeah there's certain actions that would need to continue to occur in order to keep the environmental review fresh um, if it sits too long then we end up having to start all over so um Yes, that is something that we need to be able to monitor and um, judge as time goes on uh, when we need to perform some type of action to keep it still alive. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilmember Trent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Rick, thank you for your presentation. I just uh, want to uh, give you some uh, feedback in regards to, um, you know, reaching out to um, you know, a wider community, especially the people of color. Um, and that is, if you, um, if you want to do that, then I would suggest um, to contact uh, the um, human services providers within the city. We have a lot of agencies that work um, with many, many uh, people of color, um, you know, low income folks in the, in the community. So uh, those are the agencies that I would, um, you know, try to reach out to. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Council Member Moore, you still have your hand up. Did you have another comment or nope, question? Looks like I owe you 15 cents, Chair. <laughs> I'll take that uh, down. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Council Member Kraft. Uh, just another point of uh, feedback. If we can make sure that when we start reaching out to the public, we can get some materials um, translated into other languages so that they're accessible to people because even if we do have staff people um, answering questions and if we use you know our, our city channel i know that there are people in our community that english isn't their first language so it would be good if we could get some translated materials as well absolutely thank you thank you any other comments, questions for Ray? I think that's it, Ray. Thank you very much. I'm sure we'll come up with some more. If, you, if we come up with anything, you want us to email you or or that uh, way? Yeah, that, please do. OK, thank you. All righty, that is the end of our agenda. We're down to any other business. Hearing seeing none. Our next meeting will be December 7th at 5 o'clock. I'm sure it's going to be Zoom again. And so other than that, if you see anything else, I will go into adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. All Thank right. you, Jay. Thank you, everyone. Right. Remember Thank you. the vote. Remember the vote. <laughs> yes, vote. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Vote, vote, oh, vote. When are, when are we did. supposed to do that by? <laughs> <laughs> I'll come pick it up for you. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Okay. Good night. Good night, Bye. everyone. Good night. See everyone Wednesday. Great day. Good night. Bye. Rest of the evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.